come to the Ceramic Museum in Limoges where we will see the tradition of ceramics in Limoges, ceramics and porcelain and throughout and also um, recent pottery and glass as well so it should be good. Machine, the, the pottery yeah. and uh, the moulds and pressing the clay And the different pieces that make a, a piece of pottery, the flange, the lid, the handle, the knob, and the plaster moulds. And where they make the moulds this way to trim the inside and on a wheel with the traditional tools I use and press moulds for little pieces to push the clay into the mould or well, the same here but in metal beautiful pieces You see how the cup is made inside because you pour in the slip, you pour out the slip which is liquid clay and what is left, wherever you longer you lead it, the thicker it is, is the cup and the tools of the potter and the sculptor. And where they used to sit, do the fine work with all of their tools, their colours to paint patterns. The model of a kiln, you see the pottery inside and the chimney and the fire at the bottom. A natural clay, it is a mixture of china clay, kaolin and uh, some of the materials to make a fine porcelain, a semi-transparent uh, test pattern. Here are test patterns and colours they would use they paint these first and then they put a clear glaze over the top after they've been fired once. Fired once is bisque and then the glaze firing, which is a higher temperature, afterwards. Bisque firing is normally between 600 and 800. But um, for vitrification, for these high firings, they might be going up to 1200, 1300. Here they talk of 900 degrees and uh, 950. 875 and the delicate brushes for painting. Liquid gold. We could push through metal plates like this to make a stencil. Very, very beautiful designs. So some would be stenciled and the rest would be hand finished. A wallpaper of the same. So you could have a matching wallpaper and plates. Sometimes they're transferred, the colours are transferred onto the plate and then burnt on afterwards or melted on afterwards. Here in Limoges, Stoke on Trent was also producing pottery and some porcelain. Lithography. So they have copied a skeleton in China. I'm not sure whether they produce them by actual measuring or by making a mould of each bone, which would be far simpler. You can see the construction of the very big old uh, fires, probably coal fired these ones. Difficult to see with the reflection. Do you see how huge they were? Massive with fires all the way around the bottom. And then filled with pots right up through the top. And smaller kilns like this. See how they are constructed with the fire underneath and then the dome on top. 
filled with pots and look at the beautiful things they turned out. You've seen some in the other museum earlier in the film. But now we're in the actual Pottery Museum itself. And they will have even better examples, I suspect. The plates are built up with clay before and a low relief like this and then there's a material for the pottery a beautiful glass with the uh, enamel laid on <coughs> a grand ceramic And the cups in pink. And look at all these different pieces that were fit together here and then would be put together with the clay or the slip to glue. And of course, a very decorative look at the detail in this build I'm not sure why they always have to show one breast but it seems to be traditional you want to be famous and your bust created you can have this done as well different taste here I think to keep the tea warm and more modern pottery and we come back to pottery through the centuries but it's going to be difficult to see with the uh, reflection Tunisian and African and Greek and all sorts of things we're going to see now and a big amphora, Italian Roman pottery. We can't see much because of the light. very decorative and unusual pieces which in some cases we would consider not in good taste but it is the taste of the time and religious pieces This is rather beautiful, the work in that, some of these. Let's look more closely. Rampant lion.
this fell over when you were making it. Even now it must be difficult to move. The work in underglaze painting here, so you'd have the hand painting done and then the clear glaze put on top and fired over the surface. Or you can cut through the clay and make like a lace work. The Crimson Fiance where the colour is painted on top of a white glaze, tin glaze, and melted into the surface. Pot. You see how this has been a low fired glaze put into usually a, a wood-fired kiln, taken out and put into uh, sawdust and then removed, which creates the uh, crackling in the glaze when it's very cold. Difficult piece to make in porcelain as well. Now we have the traditional faience with the blue uh, cobalt oxide painted on top of the white tin glaze. And many firings for pieces like this where each colour would be painted gradually and then sometimes fired several times to get the enamels and the colours on top. Beautiful Chinese pieces. Wonderful, look at this piece. Built that is in slabs, cut out and put together with the slip. Easiest way. Same there, added in and fired after. And another cobalt glaze, cobalt being the main colour for blue. Copper usually green and iron for the brown red. What they were using if it's a, a different copper. Interesting to see Chinese tools for painting. A lot of uh, Western art has been influenced by Chinese and Japanese art and painting. Usually manganese for black. You see gold is placed afterwards for a last firing. A much lower firing or the gold would burn off. So two firings. Unusual this because we have almost a medieval insignia saying England here in the Chinese style. Then we do see the uh, influence of the Japanese and the Chinese here in the pottery in France as well. The Japanese created yeah. this and then yeah. sent here yeah. to, to yeah. sell for the European. Yeah. The engravings were given to uh, um, Japanese and Chinese artists with uh, uh, Western uh, iconography uh -huh. to, so that it could be sold to uh, the European market. Okay, okay, it was for to, to sell. Excellent. The influences of Japanese and Chinese coming into the uh, English and French markets, the Chinese are actually being commissioned. It would be imported over here. This is about two foot six across. So we get the size of it. It's a wonderful museum. Again, both of these museums are superb. You really must come and see the art museum and this one of pottery is fantastic. So this is a famous... Um, this he turned this ex-hospital into a museum. Boucher. Beautiful, beautiful pieces. More modern. But the design of these... And you can see the influence now of the Chinese and the Japanese in the style of simplifying the pattern and the influence there again you see of the Japanese pottery but beautifully painted and this one's so different
building up with enamels in many coats, so there'd be many firings to these colours. And again and again and again, beautifully done. because of the reflection. Again, the Japanese-Chinese influence is always there. We see it over and over again in the pottery. Lighter colours will normally be at a much lower firing temperature. Dull colours are usually stoneware and direct from the oxides and golds and the brighter colours need a much lower firing temperature. The gold would usually be put on last because it is the most sensitive of the temperatures. Yeah, I love it. You do All styles and types. Good examples of everything. And again, the pierced wear. Look at the colours on this. And a beautiful fish dish comes in half. It's for a small mantelpiece clock. Again, clear square. It's designed a plastic chair. But here we are in the museum of the pottery ceramic in uh, Limoges. And I just love this acrylic chair, plastic as well. They've been very friendly and it's a beautiful collection. So this museum is a must as well as the other museum of arts. Beautiful pink lustres here. Now luster is when it um, almost looks an oily surface, gold luster like this, and then we have other lustres which will look almost oily in their reflection. Not a favourite of mine, but still very interesting. And we have like a marbled ware here. Now some marbled ware is done by mixing different clays together, and when they are turned or thrown, then the lines in the clay will look like marbling. I suspect there's a way of doing this with glazes because it looks like the marbling continues down through the legs as one pattern. So I don't think it's in the clay. Beautiful examples of pierced wear again here. Oh, we have uh, examples of the English Wedgwood here with the white porcelain against the blue mixture of um, porcelain and the cobalt oxide. Little delicate pink teacups. If I woke up to that in the morning, I'd look in the mirror. Champignon, a delightful little fish, croissant, a beautiful little piece, beautiful greenware here with the copper oxide. All the copper oxide pottery in different tones. So clear glaze mixed with copper oxide. Right down, I suspect, to some. Um, black uh, manganese oxide in some of these clear glaze over the porcelain. Not white, just clear glaze I suspect. Maybe, maybe tin glaze over them. Just talking about manganese, here you are with these beautiful dark iron and manganese the beautiful blue cobalt, but how they get this one of turquoise, I'm not sure. What a lovely turquoise colour. And a little bit of gold on the top just to bring the colour out. I'm just looking for to see if there's any English slipware, but as yet I haven't seen that. The Troisienne starch. The, um, 
This is now what I mean by porcelain, because you see it's semi-transparent. They put a light inside and you can see right through the clay. Very beautiful, delicate pieces. Gradually eaten away with a fine knife tools very carefully when it was just about leather hard, just coming in detail like this. Now we have some more modern pottery, beautiful. These are a beautiful turquoise, but the light is not allowing you to see. I'll put a load of plates together to make a pattern if you have a round table. It would be nice. Or if you're a vicar. And if you're enjoying the cubist style or the bow house. And these very shiny pieces of luster. It's magnificent. Ostrich, which comes up. Still life to paint. In ceramic. Or oh, you can just squash pieces and put them together to make a sculpture like this. Or have half a cup of tea or half a teapot. But remember that nearly all pottery, thrown pottery, is based around a cylinder. The ball is made from a cylinder, the tube is made from a cylinder. But when you come to slab work or hand work, of course you can get different shapes, such as squares or oblongs. So you make this on the wheel first, make a mould, and then the handles and lids will be handmade for the moulds to be cast and fixed on, fixed on separately afterwards, after the mould pieces are each made individually. Some are amusing, and some are more traditional. But so many different ideas. All functional. A large game of chess. Again, some beautiful ceramics here. And unusual shapes. Nicely put together exhibition, even the display cases making interesting shapes on the back, not just simply plonked in with bits of plywood. Obviously, some things are more easily functional than others. But we must remember that for dolls, the faces were made from ceramics. They were cast from plaster moulds. There's one there, you see. 
and then they would be hand painted afterwards and then sewn together they would be drilled you see the two holes down there for the body to be sewn onto and hand painted and then the dresses and the bodies made afterwards detail on this and the work, the very fine work of the porcelain, it's transparent through those petals. You can maybe just see on the film, but it's absolutely wonderful. Very difficult to keep clean. It's no longer allowed, but in the graveyards over here, the older graveyards, you will find like greenhouses full of um, flowers and artificial things, but also these were made in ceramics at this time, the photographs of the people which were fired into the pottery. Now these cemeteries are not allowed anymore but they're still protected. Simplicity of this, almost au nouveau. See how it's in low relief, how the one here has not been painted in this one. Beautiful au nouveau piece. Oh yes, look at these lovely works. I love Arne Vogt. J'adore. And these pieces. And this wonderful piece. But again, you can see here, in this case, you have the uh, what looks like the actual mould where the pieces are pressed against here, clay, and taken away and then put together afterwards. Because this is in reverse to this. So very well designed exhibition. You can imagine Grand Chateau this in the centre. It's superb. It's beautiful. Again, Pierce Ware here. And all of the pieces have these designs. But they're all white, no colour on these. Well, you see one that is fully coloured. And again, these beautiful little pieces like this. I'm sorry you can't see it in the Lumiere Pavon, but it's uh, interesting. From these very free flowing designs, here sponged and brushed and melted in, glazes poured in and across each other, and here. The same, but some areas hand painted and with luster. There you can see the colours they would use. A test. Beautiful examples of low relief and pierced wear. In this case, they haven't gone completely through. The cups are drinkable. They've almost gone right through and it's just translucent that they didn't go right through. If they had, they'd have ruined the piece. But look at this the translucency of this and they haven't pierced right through. It's so, so delicate. You can see there where they pierce right through and here, no. You can fill this tass with tea. You can fill this cup with tea. The same with the light shining through so you can see how transparent and thin they will go and how the clay, how the porcelain is translucent. So, this set was exceptional in that they were shown in Paris in a very special exhibition. About every 20 years. And this time, pink slip, pink clay. As I say, remember that porcelain is an artificial body, bone china. It's not something you dig up. It's a mixture of artificial and clay and different herbs put together. 
Just look at the delicacy of this. It's incredible. It's very incredible. The legs on the herons, on the stalks and the herons. And the way the flowers hang over, they're so thin. If this was fired high with the light behind, I'm sure we would see more transparency. Beautiful fish of gold with the white porcelain, swift or swallow. And again, a full colour version here. Aren't they gorgeous? And then we come up to more delicate pottery again. These tasks, these little cups with the pattern. Absolutely wonderful. And so bright, almost like later English pottery. But more look at the pearls on this. They're not pearls, they're pottery. And that beautiful, delicate, hard to believe you can do that without breaking it. The intricacy and time it would take. I know because I've made Japanese stem bowls and I've pierced them and know how difficult this can be. And for your eggs. What a beautiful piece again. Magnificent large, well, it must be nearly five foot. If you have the space for such before you paint it. And after, as in Blue Peter, his before and his after. More traditional Limoges pottery, I think, now you're seeing. had to be made first and then a mould would be made to cast them. It would take gallons of slip and liquid clay to fill this and to turn it. It's possible to come from America and make money here because here you have an American family who started a big pottery in Limoges and made a success and owned a chateau. And again we come back to the Chinese and Japanese influence. These beautiful pieces. Delicate, delicately painted. Depends upon your taste, if you like more modern. Simplified, beautiful shapes, or the more intricate. The different styles. So if you're a potter, either in the studio or in a college, this film may assist you to have some ideas. And this is very different. Remember that everything is pottery, even the chestnuts and the outside. You see how everything supports itself. The whole figure is resting on the tail, on the legs. The tail is resting at the bottom and comes up under the lion. And even the leaves are supported. Everything supports itself, except for that leg that stands out, but it's just short enough to take its own way. It's used later. Here, for instance, fully painted. And the two together. Then again, we look at this Art Nouveau uh, 
glass. Wonderful. Now we're into the section of glass which I shall very much enjoy. Beautiful, but the lighting is difficult. Now, now we are talking about the, uh, whether we can find these glasses in the Brokantz and the big veneers. I'm sorry about the lighting, but it's just not possible to get better. Transparency of this one. Beautiful big piece with decoration laid on the outside, cut on through. Gorgeous, and I'm not sure of the technique on these, I must admit, whether they are enamels placed on, how they're built up, or find the information here in the museum in this, this particular case. And this beautiful big formal mirror. Very helpful here, and they have given me a book on the route of the porcelain here. If you have a question, they will help you. So it's a very good museum. Afterwards in the shop, there's some beautiful things for sale as well. So there's some very nice pieces of quality to buy as well if you want and the books on the area. So a nicely displayed museum. If you want some jewellery, the coquelicot, the puppies here. A necklace, 55 euros, earrings, 49. Gives you an idea of prices. You see the transparency of the porcelain here that's for sale. 150 euros for that little light, 120 for that one. 50 euros on the left, 50 50 on the right. Oh, oui, it's super, ça. Oh, oui, c'est délicat. Well, we've just finished this wonderful visit to the museum, and I would certainly recommend you to come here. Wonderful display of pottery, and as you see, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I used to teach pottery and I used to know and was quite close to Hornsey Pottery in East Yorkshire where we had a very similar system and factory going on of slip casting. As I'm sure most of you are aware, I still paint and I still do some crafts but pottery I had to give up a while ago partly due to the arthritis though I do really miss it and I'm very tempted to set up again sometime. I actually then went through to making a, a full set of DVDs two box sets which take you right the way through all of this from slip casting to throwing to mold making everything enough information in fact to set up your own pottery with all techniques and methods so if you do want to go into this in more depth then rather than just this film you get in touch with me and the DVDs are available in the